Hello and welcome to another Only a Bag gear review video. Because today is raining, um, there is water coming in under the balcony door, uh, the wind is howling through the cracks, and I ran out to get groceries, and I used these Lems boulder boots. Um, so I wanted to talk about them today. Um, I did not take my lovely house sweater out with me. Uh, this is just because it's freezing in this room that I used to film and I wanted to stay warm for the duration of the video. So, the Lems Boulder Boot. If you have not heard of Lems, um, they are a Colorado-based company, and they are famous for primarily three things. They are famous for having a zero drop, uh, which just means that the heel and the toe are the same plane. Um, I think it needs to be less than half a millimeter between the heel and the toe uh, for it to be zero drop. The other thing they're famous for is being very uh, collapsible. Um, they roll up very, very easily. Um, all over their website, it's pictures of how easy you can roll them, pack them away. Because of this, in the one bag community, uh, they tend to be pretty popular uh, because it's easy just to shove them into a you know the empty little bit of a bag, um, and you don't have to worry about if they're going to maintain their shape or anything like that. Um, and the last thing they're known for is having a very wide footbed um, or toe bed, maybe, uh, however you want to call it. Um, but this part here is very wide in comparison uh, to other shoes, to other boots. And for someone like me with wide feet, that was very, very important. When I bought these, I was also looking for two other uh, traits I, a shoe could have. I wanted something waterproof and I wanted something warm. Um, I was using these obviously as a, as a winter boot, um, so I wanted something that could be good to wear without socks, uh, that could be, I mean, I use socks, but just in case, um, and that's something that wouldn't get wet if I didn't bring an umbrella. So the Lems uses a DWR finished uh, nylon cordura for most of the body of the boot, um, as well as a leather strip running around the edge in the back. Um, when they arrived, that was finished with some kind of fat um, to make it waterproof. Um, I have over the years, every winter, I go back and I refinish it and I try to make it better and better so it doesn't ever leak water. Um, and of course, the DWR finish has worn away by now. Um, it used to be quite um, impregnable, but now it is... Um, I've tried to fix it over the years with like beeswax and any other types of fat just to kind of at least have a layer that's waterproof. Uh, but even at the beginning, if you are considering these, this rim here, um, where the leather and the uh, nylon meet, that did let in water, um, whether it was a heavy rainstorm or if you step into a puddle, um, that will just let water right in there. The other thing, like I mentioned, was a warm boot. Um, and these are finished on the inside with flannel. Um, it keeps my foot incredibly warm. Uh, I, I thought, if I'm being honest, it would be a little gimmicky. I thought like, oh, flannel, okay. It's not like wool or shearling. Uh, but I was really pleasantly surprised that they really, really, really did maintain um, basically their, their warmth. Uh, like I've used them on freezing days, uh, sub-freezing days, and I've had no issues with socks, wool socks and these boots. Really warm feet. Um, part of it too, I think, is the extra space. Uh, there's a little bit of extra space in there. Not, not enough that like my feet are sliding around, but enough that my foot isn't like in contact with the nylon necessarily. Um, so there's a little bit of that dead air space uh, that does help sort of warm my foot up. Before I start talking about any of the cons of this uh, shoe, I wanted to also mention the sole. Uh, unfortunately, they're a little dirty. Like I said, I just wore them outside. Um, but you can tell they are pretty evenly worn away, um, which is not that common for me. I tend to favor my right foot, um, whether I'm hiking, whether I'm going upstairs, 
and whatever it is. So it tends to wear away a lot quicker than the left foot for me. Um, maybe I just walk weird. Um, so with most of my shoes, the right one tends to be more worn away than the left. This one, you can tell they're pretty even, which I'm really excited by. But more importantly, is even without any tread left, um, as you can tell, it has remained incredibly non-slip. Um, I have I've genuinely never slipped wearing these shoes, uh, and this is with no tread. This is just on. I live in Italy, and it's very slippery stone. I mentioned it's raining. I mean the 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 streets they're all like sort of um, uh, just rough stone. Well, not rough stone, smooth stone, but rough cut. Um, so they're not, there's nowhere to really, there's no like sidewalks and stuff like that. Um, so it can be treacherous when it's wet. And with these boots, I have never slipped. So I'm really, really happy. Um, that was a surprise. I hadn't heard about that before buying them. You know, some people were like, oh, I like the, the tread, but blah, 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 blah. Um, but I genuinely hadn't know, I did not know that it was this, um, basically this well, not necessarily well made, but just gripping. Um, and the only con I can really think of is specifically with the right shoe. Um, if I put my hand in here, you can tell because there's a giant hole um, where the leather meets the um, sole. Um, and that is a bit of a disappointment. Um, I did talk to Lems, I sent them a message, and they explained before. I actually told them like the the issue. I said there's like the the, the leather has a defect, and they said the um, you can kind of tell there's a bit of a delamination happening um, where it's like the um, the skin of the leather is coming away from the leather itself. I know that's definitely not how it's called, but that's the best way to describe it. Um, they told me that as a defect, it's covered in their one year warranty, and unfortunately. I was out of that because I messaged them, I think, on year uh, three of having these shoes, and I've had them for four years now. Um, so they told me, unfortunately, there's nothing they could do. Um, I asked if I could send pictures of the hole. They said, of course. I sent pictures. They said, yeah, maybe you could find a cobbler in your area that could fix the shoes for you. I don't know where to find a cobbler, um, so I don't have them fixed. Um, and unfortunately, when I did look up, you know, this sort of effect, it's at the flex point, which does get the most um, damage in a shoe. Uh, and most of my shoes do have some kind of damage across the flex point. Um, and there's no way to reattach uh, basically an upper and a sole when it's like this, apparently. If I had torn somewhere else, there'd be a chance, but where it is specifically, there's not much they can do. So it is disappointing. Uh, however, since then, um, I have recommended these boots to a number of friends who are looking for something that's comfortable, warm, waterproof, with a wide footbed, um, and they've all been really happy with them. Everybody's enjoyed them. It's, again, these like really small things, really simple, small things. Um, uh, well, one large thing, I guess, is the hole. Um, but besides that, minimal wear and tear despite having them for four years, they clean up really well. Um, and again, despite the hole, they're the warmest boot I've ever owned. Um, and I have really no other complaints about them. So if you're looking for a $130 boot, it usually is on sale for 90. Um, this is definitely one I'd recommend, the Lems Boulder boot. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you watch my next video.